Hey, what up, fellas? There's this one fishing spot that would be very good during these conditions right now. Usually I get out there on my mini boat, but right now, 20 to 25 mile per hour winds would not be good for my little boat. Depending on the driving conditions through these salt flats, we'll either be able to make it there in the truck, or maybe we're gonna be walking there a little bit. The spot I wanna fish is kind of like an inshore beach. It's really just a shoreline, but the only structure there is really sandbars. So it is kind of like a beach. If there are fish, they're just gonna be cruising along. They're not gonna be just chilling out in one spot. And since they're gonna be cruising, that means we can just chill in one spot. Let the fish come to us. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's all if we can make it there. Well, the truck made it, but we still have a little bit of walking to do down the shoreline. line. That's why we got this bad boy right there. And you know Coop, when we're fishing with bait, I'm always bringing way too many rods. I think we have five rods right here. Not, not too bad, but we probably could have got away with three. And check it out, we have those sandbars we were talking about right here. I'm thinking there might be some, some bait fish trapped between these sandbars that are kind of uh, out of the water right now. Brought the cast net just for this reason, hopefully. We can snag up some mullet to use for bait as well. To go along with our sh bucket of shrimp right there. You guys in here? Any guys in here? I'm just spooking everything. There we go. Finally, got a guy and it's a giant. Oh, a couple big ones. And that's perfect, fellas. That's actually not a bad thing, some big old mullet. Took us a little bit of time, but we got our mully right there, and that's perfect, because we're gonna be going with cut bait today. Crossing one of these short guts right now, but we got the all-terrain vehicle, <laughs> so we're good to go. I was in this area a couple days ago, and I saw some a bunch of reds cruising, like not any groups, just, just ones or twos, but they were just cruising along these sandbars right here, so we just had to hope they're still here today. Just got to the spot we wanted to be, and we came across something nice. Not this guy, we've got a dead redfish, which I mean, at least is proof there's some reds, but check this out. What do we got right here? But a nice freaking blue crab. And this guy is gonna be bait. There's nothing you can do about it, fella. Whoa. Whew. We got that guy. Sorry, fella. How lucky is this though, dude? I actually went to the bait shops. I was looking to get some blue crabs. They didn't have any. Why not just go out there and forage your own if you can? Ha, mate, how lucky is this? No, we just had to catch some fish, man. This is exactly the bait we wanted. The big old blue crab. Another little crab right here. A little guy though. Another blue crab. Woo. I hate to take more than we're gonna use though, so <laughs> we'll just annoy him a little bit and then let him go. You know what we had to do with the crab. We're sending that guy out there whole on a nice big hook. We're actually gonna do the long drop with this crab. Obviously, we're gonna wanna spread our baits out pretty good here, just cause we're not gonna be moving. There's definitely been some reds in super shallow, so we're gonna get some baits shallow, kinda right off, right off the shoreline. But also, I wanna get out here to some of these deeper guts and deeper bars. And when I'm on my little boat, I can see into the water really well. And a lot of times you will see uh, a bunch of reds just running down the shoreline. Not really worth it to cast to, because they're so spread out. But if we're fishing bait, we can just post up and wait for them to come to us. Fly with the wind, literally. That wind's actually helping us. 25 mile per hour wind at your back. We'll help you cast a little bit. Cut mullet, going on the circle hook right there. We'll do a medium drop on this guy. Also sending out some shrimp. This is probably the most likely to get hit and most likely to be some trash fish, but maybe the redfish and drum can find it first. About 40 minutes, no bite, so we're gonna reel our stuff in. Hopefully we still have this crab on here, and I think we do, it's pretty heavy. But uh, we're gonna keep moving on a little bit further. Bang, we're in there with a little bit of mullet. Yeah, it's already getting bit in it. <laughs> it's already got bit. Dang, something went for it instant. Is it on? It's on. Is it? Yeah, it's on. Small guy, but it's a fish. What kind of fish is it? Tiny red. Targeted species, boys. No way. That's what we're talking about. 
<laughs> First fish, dude. Throwing a fresh piece of mullet, and you get an instant bite like that. <laughs> it's the species we're going for, but we're looking for some keepers to keep. We're in a good area, though. I probably should have put them in some deeper water. That's my bad. Oh, there's something on the shrimp. Dang, another red. Small, man, small, small. Even smaller. They're in here, though. We just gotta wait for the bigger ones to come around. Hopefully, they're gonna eat up our crab. I wish they had that whole crab still. Wah. So, yep, strategy now. It's gonna be getting some bigger chunks of mullet on there. Not super huge, but big enough that, that a bigger mouth is necessary to eat that up. There's a bite. Oh, a little run. Come on, pull harder, bud. Pull harder, pull harder. I think this is on the, oh, is he on? He's on. It's not feeling too big, though. <laughs> it's coming to the top, though, which we like to see. That means it's not a hardy boy. It's just another red. Dang, same size. Man. And that size is definitely not the size that we're looking for. This was that bigger chunk of mullet. Looks like it got whittled down until this little guy could get it. Oh, he's on, he's on there. It's, I don't know, it could be a, actually it feels like a hardy boy. I don't know, let's see, let's see. It is, it's a freaking drum, dude. Hey boys, what did I tell you? I called it, man. I said, there's gonna be redfish and there's gonna be drum. And what did we catch so far? We caught some redfish and we caught a freaking drum. Beauty right there, man. We, we called the species, man. We're, we're out here micro fishing. But dude, if there's one of these guys, a drum, any size, that means there could be different sizes as well. Actually, you know what? I've got the top secret in my backpack that I just realized we have. <laughs> you guys already know what it is, don't you? Dang, the pack of fish bites. Ready to go. Let's see what flavor we got. We got the shrimp flavor, my favorite. <laughs> so, but that makes it sound like I'm the one eating it, but I found the I found the shrimp flavor to work the best for me. As I'm sure you guys know, the fish bites not quite as good as getting bites as real actual shrimp, but the great thing is they stay on about 20 times to 30 times longer. There he is. This is a small fish. This is bait right here, boys. This is perfect bait. Holy. Is it, or is it a red? No, it's a red, dude. <laughs> We're going the wrong direction, fellas. Look at that, dude. I thought for sure that was gonna be a croaker, a whiting, or a spot, but it's a miniature freaking redfish. Cool, though. Ha! Oh, there's a bite. Stay on there, bud. It might be, it might be something. It might be something. Finally. I don't know, maybe it's not though. Dang, I don't know, boys. I'm not sure if this is something or not. Um, it might be a dang. I don't know, let's see. Come on, be a redfish. It's not fighting like a stingray at all, so. It's a red, boys, no way. It's a keeper. Dude, right at sunset. It's a keeper, boys. Get him. The mullet. Is it a keeper? Nah, that's a keeper. Yes, sir. No way, dude. Through it all, boys. Through it freaking all. We got a keeper. I was doing it with this guy with the shrimp. He got my shrimp. All of a sudden, the other rod with the mullet doubles over. And we got that guy right there. That's all we freaking wanted, man. Just making our way back to the truck and I found the mother load of Herman crabs. Let's cook them up. Somehow we made it out alive with our redfish. Don't tell anybody, but starting next month, I'm gonna be doing a challenge series of videos that's gonna require me to cook up some fish. And I wanna make some tasty recipes, but time is gonna be a huge commodity. So I've been scouring the internet, checking out some cookbooks, and kind of making up my own fish recipes that can be made in under 20 minutes while being tastier than throwing on just a salty seasoning and throwing it on a pan. So here's what we're doing with our redfish fillets today. We're making sort of a Greek marinade and we're adding a little bit of fresh basil in there. It's not a pesto, okay? Just 
just a handful of basil. We have three quarter cups of olive oil, one teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of oregano, one teaspoon of pepper, just a handful of basil, and then the juice of five lemons. Keeping with the simplicity here, this is the only amount of knife work we're gonna have to do. It takes about five seconds, grab our handful of basil, and just give it a really rough chop before we throw it in the food processor. That's it right there. And everything's going in our boy, the food processor. If you don't have one now, come on, man. You're an adult. At, le at least get a blender. You're a grown man and you don't have a food processor? All right, let's start the timer and see if we get this done in under 20 minutes. Stopwatch is started. Now, easily enough, everything's just going in the food processor. Olive oil, oregano, salt. Then we made sure to give one of our lemons a good rinse and we're gonna be putting the zest from one lemon. Just using the microplane to get the zest off this lemon and into the marinade. Bang. That's what we call good enough right there. Now we're gonna be adding our lemon juice and we're just gonna be using a colander to catch those seeds. Just makes it a lot easier. And of course we rolled our lemons before we're squeezing them. Everything's in, now we just give it a quick blitz. You know what, fellas? I'm a little bit embarrassed. I blitzed it before adding the final and pretty important ingredient. One to two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. And there it is, our beautiful, fresh smelling marinade. Now this marinade is more than we need just for one or two fish fillets, but in the fridge, I've got some chicken and it goes great on chicken as well. At the same time, we are calling this a marinade, but since it does have that lemon in it, I don't like to leave it on there too long for fish. Matter of fact, we're not even gonna marinate it. We're just gonna put it straight on here and then we're gonna put it straight onto the pan. If you did wanna put the fish in a Ziploc bag and marinate it a little bit, I wouldn't leave it longer than 20 or 30 minutes in the fridge. And again, we did cut our fillets in half. We have got a thicker side and a little bit thinner side. So I like to put the thicker side on just about 30 seconds, a minute before the thinner one. Then we can base on a little bit of the extra marinade on top. Smells great and we're doing pretty good on time. About 14, 15 minutes. Fudge. And you are done. Woohoo! We're, we're cutting it pretty close there. 19 minutes. Bang, 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 bang. Sorry. <laughs> All right, there it is. Our Greek marinade with basil, redfish, and just a little bit of rice that everybody should have in their fridge. We made it sub 20, super easy, and hopefully pretty delicious. Mmm. Mmm. And not that much work either. Like I said, it tastes damn good on some chicken as well, which we're probably gonna have a little bit later. Big series coming up next month though. I'm not really sure if it's possible. It's gonna be an absolute challenge. I'm really not sure if it's possible, but stay tuned. Hopefully it'll, it'll be good. Love you guys very much. Be safe and we'll see you next time.